Welcome back, everybody, to the GSMC Women's Sports Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm sorry, guys. It has been a long day. So we just got done talking about the rise of women's sports bars, and now we're going to transition to talking about the WNBA. We're going to talk about stand-up performances and a change in team rankings. It's pretty juice of gossip, I'll be honest. Before we dive into that, I did want to ask that you guys like and follow the show again, and I want to remind you guys to be one part of our show by tip and donating using the link gsmcpodcast.net. This also puts your questions at the top of the list so that I see them and they do get read on the air. And of course, we really appreciate the support and it does make a difference. Once again, that link is gsncpodcast.net. Now that we got that out of the way, we are going to get started. So let's get started with talking about some standout performances. Okay, so let's start with Kayla McBride. Okay. Kayla McBride entered the season, her three-point average, I mean percentage, or average, I guess, three-point percentage had dropped for three consecutive years with the Minnesota Lynx. It was fair to wonder whether this soon-to-be 32-year-old who consistently plays year-round was, you know, slipping, like she was getting older, um, was this going to be her ending soon, but however, that's not the case. McBride is averaging 17.2 points and a career best 3.8 assists per game. Her effective field goal percentage is a shocking 70.4. For context, her previous best over a full season at 52.6. Links are scoring 40.6 points more per 100 possessions with her on the court and route to a 4 to 1 start. Perhaps her only blemish was a mixed fadeaway at the buzzer against the Connecticut Sun that would have made their record 5-0. to zero. And then also McBride dropped 14 points and added 5 assists against the New York Liberty while defending um, Lainey Hamilton and limiting her to 4 points on 2 of 8 shooting. Super duper impressive. The next day on the second game of a back-to-back, McBride was perfect from the field for 37 minutes, making all 9 of her field goals and 5 free throws while guarding all-star Ryan Howard and Alicia Gray. She reached 13th for the most threes in WNBA history and she has been really dominating the court with her shooting next we have to talk about Monique Billings I'm a huge Dallas Wings fan so I mean of course I am talking about her right now okay Billings had to spend had spent the entirety of her pro career with the Atlanta Dream before her offseason departure she chose to sign with the Sparks her hometown team but was ultimately the last cut in training camp Her absence from the WNBA didn't last too long as the Dallas Wings came calling once Natasha Howard and Jalen Brown went down on opening night and Billings had been the, quote, missing piece for the Wings in the words of coach Latricia Trambell. Billings entered the startout lineup for Dallas in her second game and averaged 19 points and 10 rebounds as the Wings went 2-1 this week. And a fun twist of fate, two of the games were against Atlanta and Los Angeles, so, you know, those were a little, you know, a little spark to them. Oh my gosh, wait, that's kind of funny. That's kind of like a pun, like the Los Angeles Sparks, just a little spark to them. See, that was, that was, I was thinking about that one. Anyway, Billings had 20 points and 10 rebounds against the Dream. As stat line, she managed only once in six years at Atlanta. She individually bested her replacement, Tina Charles, on the night, but Dallas came up short in the final result. Billings would not be denied in her second opportunity for revenge. Against the players whom she battled in training camps two weeks prior, Billings was dominant. In the second half, despite being on a back-to-back, she had three offensive rebounds of her own compared with zero for the Sparks. Her driving layup past Cameron Brink with two and a half minutes to go gave the Wings a lead they would not relinquish. Now, the reason that I am talking about her specifically is because of that, you know, that revenge kind of side to it it's like drama like when I saw that she was going against you know Los Angeles Sparks and Atlanta Dream I was like oh this is gonna be interesting and you know what she did make it interesting so now we're gonna switch over to talking about the team rankings this is also a lot of drama here okay I expected the New York Liberty and Las Vegas Aces to dominate the league and it seems like there are some other teams that are overshadowing them okay so let's get into them previously ranked at third The Connecticut Sun is doing very well now, ranked at first. They are currently on a winning streak of five games. They held off upset-minded Indiana by four points, beat Sergi Minnesota by one in overtime, and then got past Chicago on the road by four, despite star Alyssa Thomas being ejected in the third quarter after a hard foul on Sky rookie Angel Reese. Do you want a Bonner-led Connecticut with a combined 61 points and three victories? 
So she's been really dominating in terms of scoring. And then recently ranked fourth. This actually kind of shocks me too. I did not expect this to be the second place team. I'm not going to lie. Recently ranked fourth, the Minnesota Lynx moved up to second with a record of four wins and one loss. The Lynx were a basket away from the top spot in the power rankings, but they suffered a tough 83-82 overtime loss at Connecticut on Thursday. But, you know, despite the defeat and the indefinite amount loss of second-year player Diamond Miller due to a knee injury, Minnesota's top draft pick last season, the Lynx got back-to-back -back wins Saturday against New York and Sunday against Atlanta. Kayla McBride had a big day Sunday with 31 points, making her first nine shots from the field. We already talked about her. Very impressed with how she's doing. Of course, she is being very beneficial for the team. At third, here is... Here's when it gets a little bit awkward. We have the Las Vegas Aces. They were previously ranked first. They had three wins and one loss. A lot of people said that they were going to win this league this year. A lot of people were predicting that. But you know what? I'm not saying they don't have that opportunity anymore. Don't get me wrong. But I just thought that they were going to stay at first place a lot longer, if that makes sense. They have three wins and one loss, like I said. The Aces defense let them down in Tuesday's 98-88 loss to Phoenix. Coach Becky Heyman said it would be a good wake-up call for the two-time defending champions, and they responded Saturday with a blowout win over Indiana. I will say, though, that the Phoenix game, where it was 98-88, is pretty, pretty intense. Um, I recommend going back and watching that game. It's pretty intense. And it also, like, you would expect it to be a closer game. Of course, a 10-point difference is still a close game. But I don't know. I was just, I didn't realize that the Aces would lose that much to that team. But anyway, at fourth is also an awkward position for the New York Liberty, who was recently ranked second. Uh, they have four wins and two losses. After a 4-0 to start to the season, Liberty had a rough, rough week, as you can see. They lost at home to Chicago and at Minnesota. New York was out-rebounded in both games, while John Quill Jones was held to single-digit scoring and each shooting 38.5% overall. For as good as the Liberty have looked at some points this season, they really don't seem in sync at others, like as a team. I don't know. I think they're going to get their head back in the game. I have a feeling they're going to get back up, but it just seems that they, were, they had an off week for sure. In fifth is the Dallas Wings, and they were previously ranked sixth. Oh, someone just said 10 points isn't that much nowadays. No, it really isn't, but there has been so many games that have been like one point difference that when you see a 10 point difference, you're like, oh, wait, that's so much. It's like, it's it's really not. <laughs> that's that's not, but yeah, no, I totally agree. It's, it's not that much. It's a very close game still. Anyway, so the Dallas Wings, they were previously ranked at six. They have three wins and two losses. They started with a loss at Atlanta on Tuesday, but bounced back with weakened victories at Phoenix and Los Angeles. Guard Enrique Agamboale scored 24, 40, and 20 points in the three games. Her 19.4th quarter against the Mercury is the highest scoring quarter this season by a WNBA player. So obviously she's she's doing great. She always does great though. Like why are we shocked here? No, she's honestly probably one of my favorite guards in the league, to be honest. The Phoenix Mercury is at six, and they were ranked fifth, so that's not great for them, I guess, but it is just one, one down, so it's not the end of the world. They have t three wins and two losses right now, the same as the Wings. Kalea Copper leads the WNBA at 29.2 PPG, and Diana Tarosi seems to have turned back the clock a bit as she's at 19 PPG. The Mercury eagerly await the return of center Brittany Griner from a toe injury, but regardless, they've had a decent start without her. I have so much confidence in this team, especially with Copper. She is just killing it. She's really been having a lot of great high-scoring games. In seventh is the Seattle Storm with three wins and three losses. They were previously ranked at eighth, so this is great for them. <laughs> the Storm beat teams they were quote-unquote supposed to be last week, Indiana and Washington at home. Joel Lloyd was key in the Storm's tie 85-83 victory against the Fever with 32 points, 11 rebounds, and 6 assists. In a 32-point blowout of the Mystics, five Storm players scored in double figures as Seattle shot 61.7% from the field. Dagan Smith scored 60 points and had a season-high 9 assists, so that's pretty great. I feel like they, this team especially just seems to be improving and improving, I feel like. I think their improvement this season has been really notable to me. I guess, I don't know. 
I mean, you see teams keep improving each game or going the opposite way, maybe. Let's hope not. But this team especially, I just see them, they do these things that I'm like, wow, they really changed as a team or something. Like little minor things. I don't really know how to explain it. Anyway, previously ranked at ninth is the Chicago Sky, who is now at eighth. Their record stands at two wins and two losses. First year coach Teresa Weatherspoon Sky are off to a much better start than most were predicting. Greg Marina Mabray leads the way with 19.3 PPG, 7 RPG, and 5.5 APG. Rookie Angel Reese is the Sky's top rebounder and second leading scorer. She took a hard foul from Connecticut's Alyssa Thomas, who was ejected on Saturday and got right back up. I mentioned that earlier. Reese wants to improve her shooting percentage of 35.7%, but overall, overall she is doing very well. Moving on to ninth, we have the Atlanta Dream with two wins and two losses. Ryan Howard is off to a strong start, leading Atlanta in scoring and steals. Vets Alicia Gray, Tina Charles, and Cheyenne Parker Tyus are also averaging in double figures. And tenth, this makes me pretty happy, is the Indiana Fever. They lost six games and have only won one game. The Fever got their first win, which was 78-73 to at Los Angeles on Friday, and their first look at the two-time defending champion Aces. They have played the most games of any WNBA team and look weary at Vegas. Caitlin Clark leads in points, assists, and steals. Veteran center to me, Fabule, whose energy has been a lift to the fever, moved into the starting lineup at Vegas, and Alaya Boston had her best game of the season at Los Angeles. I feel like they're really coming together as a team. They had a rough start in the beginning, and it seems now that there's been a lot more confidence from each of the players. At 11th is the Los Angeles Sparks. Okay, this one also hurts me so bad. My first ever time watching a professional WNBA game was the Los Angeles Sparks. So I don't know why, but there's like a soft spot to me uh, with those sparks. I don't know. But anyway, I, I don't know. I just feel like they should be doing much better than they have been. They lost four games and only won one game. Over the weekend at home, the Sparks lost by Indiana by five points and Dallas by one. Rookie Cameron Brink had a combined 36 points in those games and leads the WNBA in block shots. She's also one of my favorite rookies, so I think that's why I do have a soft spot for this team. Lastly, at 12th is the Washington Mystics. They were previously ranked at 11th, so there isn't much change or shock there. They have zero wins and six losses. There was a little doubt that this could be a challenging season for the Mystics with Elena Deladone not playing and Natasha Cloud leaving as a free agent for Phoenix. Things got worse with the May 17th injury to guard Brittany Skies. It was an ankle injury. And in Saturday's 32-point loss at Seattle, the Mystics also were without center Shakira Austin. This is Washington's worst start since losing its first eight games in the 2007 season. I'm interested to see if they can pick it up. I did not expect them to be having this rough at the start of the season, to be honest. Also, someone just wrote, I wish I could get ejected sometimes. That is really funny. I'm sorry. I'm like trying not to like crack up right now. That is so funny. So we are now going to move on to the next segment where we talk about some international soccer updates. Before we get into that, we are going to be taking a very short break. So I will see you guys very soon.